あ、いいですよ。せ<笑>やだ。フェイスロイ。Amen, we live. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you that were on last night, we had a powerful meeting last night. It was so powerful. Glory to God. We had a few people who was just saying, Hallelujah. <laughs> I love that when, when you get them kind of feedback, you know, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The message was, was just to the point. Yeah, law and grace, taking the, taking the, taking what again? Taking. Taking. Hmm. You just took it out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh, taking the guest work or something from the Christianity. Christianity you need to know that, that we are today under the, the, the grace, not law. We were, we were never Christian. The Gentile was never under the law. We were born again. We are under grace today. It's not, so you can't mix it. And that's what we were dis discussing yesterday. And it's, not, it's not a mixture. There's no mixture, man. There's no but. <laughs> Jesus did it, but no, no, he did it. Or some people, some people come on and they say, "Well, Jesus is trying to get to you." No, he's not trying. He is God. He, he's telling you. <laughs> Jesus is um, Jesus. Yeah, there's another there's a quote that uh, people make. Um, um, He's not coming back to me right now. <laughs> He's gonna come back to me before, before later on, before I finish today. Yes, he's not. He's Jesus. Jesus is man. <laughs> like this song we were just listening. Um, the only Jesus. That's my legacy. When I'm gone, I want everybody to remember me as one who love Jesus, one who talk about Jesus all the time. Yeah, that Jesus is God. God is God. God is Jesus. They are one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Why are we mixing it up, you know? <laughs> you take the Holy Spirit to teach us and the meaning of it. God bless you, Brother Kenneth. Welcome. Hannah, good morning. <laughs> She's sitting right there. Glory to God, and, and, and we we have Pastor uh, Davis and his wife today. We, God bless you all. Thank you all for coming on, fellowshipping together. Amen. Amen. Chris Crispo, God bless you, brother. From Delaware. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So people probably coming on. So we at this time we're going to turn the mic uh, over to my lovely wife Hannah, and she come and greet you all. And then Pastor Dave is going to come to greet you. Let me turn this off. <laughs> Amen. Bless her. We are here to have a great time today in the presence of the Lord. Well, we have a great time all, all the time. <laughs> Not only today, but today is a wonderful day because it's nice weather. Amen. I got up with the sniffing this morning because I was out there cutting the grass yesterday. <laughs> but um, it's all allergy and stuff like that. You know, it's all one day at a time. Uh, no problem, no problem. Good morning, everyone. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are happy and blessed to be here today. And we thank everyone who for worshiping and celebrating Jesus with us. I would like to read a scripture and also a poem. A, a, as you say, a verse by Todd Cobb. And I love his writings. So I'm going to read the the verse first. Todd Cobb from the Grace Force. 
He it reads, Jesus didn't come to forgive our sins. He didn't come to give us helpful hints on how to live the Christian life. He didn't come to make us better human beings. He didn't come to improve our morals, to give us a better set of rules to live by, or to give us a set of instructions on how to build a better life. No, he came to give us life, to give us new life, to give us his very life, he came to share his life with us by becoming one with us as he lives in us and we live in him the life of god flows through you now you don't live out of your own life anymore your life you live out of his life the only life that can live the christian life Christ's life. He is the tree of life. He is the way, the truth, the life. His words are life. He is life. And he has come to give you life. And that in an outrageous abundance. Isn't that a beautiful poem? I enjoyed it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We always talk about the life of Christ. My husband always emphasized that because it's so neglected. We always talk about forgiveness and God forgave the world. But the life is the message, his life, life that he has given us. We Amen. thank God for the life of Christ. Amen. I would like to read from the scriptures. I'm going to read the Passion Version of John, the fifth chapter, starting with verse 39. So it's going to read a little different, the Passion Version. And this also tells us about the life of Christ. The eternal life is in Him. John chapter 5, starting with verse 39. You are busy analyzing the scripture, frantically pouring over them in hopes of a gaining eternal life. Mm -hmm. Everything you read points to me. This is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Yet you still refuse to come to me so I can give you the life you're looking for, eternal life. I do not accept the honor that comes from men for I know that kind of people you really are. And I can see the love, see that the love of God has found no home in you. I've come to represent my father Yet you refuse to embrace me in faith. But when someone comes in their own name mm -hmm. and with their own agenda, you ready to accept him. Yeah. Of course you're unable to believe in me. For you live for the praises of others and not for the praise that come from the one, the only true God. I won't be the one who accuses you before the Father. The one who will incriminate you is Moses, the very one you claim to obey, the one in whom you trust. If you really believe what Moses had written, then you would embrace me, for Moses wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, no wonder you don't believe what I say. We want to believe what he says. If you believe what Moses says, you believe what he says. And we believe in the one and the only true God. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Greetings, family, friends. Pray all is well this morning with everyone this morning Amen. listening in. Amen. I pray that you are saved and sealed mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit who, who seals you. Amen. And once you're sealed, you're sealed. That's Amen. it. Amen. So I encourage everybody who's Amen. watching and the ones who may watch later on. 
Because yeah. everybody, you know, everybody knows it doesn't watch at the same time mm -hmm. when it's live, but some people catch it later on. Amen. And I'm preaching to y'all too. The ones who catch it later, I'm praying for y'all too. So you get sealed by the Holy Spirit. God. Receive Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Savior. Mm -hmm. It is important. It's your eternal life at, at stake here. Um, once you die, that's it. You can die the next second, next minute, next hour, mm -hmm. and there's no second chances. Once you once you're gone, you're gone, mm -hmm. and uh, you will spend your eternity in, in eternal damnation, eternal fire. Mm -hmm. We don't want that for you today. We want you to uh, experience heaven on earth and your eternal life in heaven with the, with the Father, Jesus Christ. And we just we, we thank you for tuning in today, um, Pastor Davis, Pastor Salim S. Davis, uh, here with my family. And, uh, okay. Fellowship with them as usual. Um, we have a great day in the Lord. Be blessed. And God bless you and your family. Take care. Praise God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to understand, to know that when we accept Christ, we accept him and he sealed you mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Okay, that's that's so important to know because a lot of people don't know that. And they live something called a jacular Christian. <laughs> they they are alive today and tomorrow they're dead. <laughs> up and down, up and down. No, when you came to him, you are sealed there. Not by no, not by that by what you believe or what you're doing is what, what he did, what the Holy Spirit did, sealed you. And that's what Jesus says in John Gospel, anyone the Father gave me, no one, I like to sing it, <laughs> no one will able to pluck them out of my hands. And you got so many teaching out there, people say, well, Man, you can lose your salvation. You can lose your salvation. They don't know what salvation is. One time about somebody preaching that. Somebody preaching you can lose your salvation. That person probably not even saved. <laughs> don't listen to them. Listen to what the Bible says. You are sealed. Why? By the Holy Spirit of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are one. Amen. So today we, as I was saying before that we, those of us that was on last night to the heard of the, 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 the law, uh, law and grace, the, knowing who you, the Christian life is lived by, uh, um, by, the, grace, by the grace of God. And my wife came up this morning with a, with a poem that she read talking about the life of Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about today again. <laughs> that's me, man. That's who I am. The resurrection life. Glory to God. Why, why, do, why, we, want, why we, we need resurrection mm -hmm. life? I mean, is it this? Are they making a song? Or the speaker, okay. Let me turn my... They could you turn it to talk off them? So you can pack fire. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you can turn this. Uh, turn this here. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're giving honor to the Lord today and to honor those of you that, those of us that are here and those of you on, on Facebook, those that will be listening later on, as Pastor David says, mm -hmm. and, and Facebook, and also because. We also put it on YouTube later on. It's not live on YouTube right now, but it will be live on YouTube. It will be on YouTube later on. And we have a few minutes, 11.42 now, a few minutes to just discuss a few, a few, a few things today. 
the, the, the first thing that came up on my Bible, the Bible, um, the, the word for today was talking about um, the, 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 we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principality, against powers, spiritual weakness in high places, and friends, we are in a battle. We are in a war. We're not just that's physical, but it's spiritual. And the spiritual is going to escalate into physical, maybe one day, you know. But but the, the most important thing that you and I in Christ are covered. We are sealed. <laughs> oh, you give me that topic. The Holy Spirit brought it to you and to me. Glory to God. We are sealed this morning. That's, so we not to have to be afraid. Amen. What, what we have in our life this morning is resurrection power resurrection life glory to god like the song we was listening before red i got um was it um, chris kill tell me tell me sang that sang the song we have resurrection power within us christ is alive living in us amen for if when we were god's enemies romans 6 5 and 10 for when we if we for if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to his him through this his death of to his to the death oh my what's going on to the death of his son how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved to his life yes yeah, so we 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 are not jocular this morning we are alive in Christ. Christ is alive in us. Why are you we hearing some more different, different version of it? Because everybody's listening to different things, different things. Everybody's giving a different version. No, but we all have one, one spirit, the same spirit, the Holy Spirit living in us. Those of us that are born again, we all was born again by the same spirit, not a different spirit. Amen. Having now at, at the cross been cleansed. Yes, yeah, that's what the cross did for us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How much, how much of it? All. all of it. How many of us? All, all of us. <laughs> the, you, you, yes, you, you, you that not even born again yet. He cleansed you. He, he, he forgave you at the cross. Yes, so it's not a, the, the issue is not a sin issue. You see, the issue is a life issue. <laughs> Why is a life issue? We all were born dead. God, can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me this morning? We all were born dead, not because of mama. No, that mama was also born dead, mama was also born dead. Mama and Papa. Physical. We, we had physical life. Glory to God. Because of Adam. Yeah, that's the secret. Because of Adam and Eve. The story. Go back to Genesis. Amen. God told Adam and Eve I've given you this beautiful garden. But there is one fruit here in the middle of it, of the garden. The day you eat of this fruit, you will die. Yes. And they was okay with that. They start obeying God and okay with it. But one day, the fella came up. I call him the fella. The deceiver. The one that are deceiving many people today, even including us, trying to deceive us. The only way you could not be deceived is by allowing the Holy Spirit of God to live in you. Okay, you already have the seal of the Spirit of God. So Adam and Eve, not Adam. Adam was a good guy there at the time. <laughs> but, but he bowed, he makes us realize that he bowed he bowed to, to his his i guess he loved her so much <laughs> amen nothing wrong in loving your wife but when your wife tell you 
give you give tell you thing that is wrong, you don't believe. You the man. You know, you the man. You the man. You are the strong. They are the weaker vessels. So you're the man. Man, man, stand up, man. It's time. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Hello. You're the leader. <laughs> but Adam bowed after Eve. First of all, was bowed to the serpent, to the enemy, the devil. And the devil came and told her a lie. And she believed it. He said, God, God, you can eat. But God won't think if you eat, you're going to be just like God. Did, did Adam go, was, was Satan cast out from heaven before that? For, for the same thing, for being proud? Mm -hmm. <laughs> want to be like God, want to take over? Yeah, he still wanted to take over. He still, I don't know why God didn't just destroy him. <laughs> but that's the purpose, the purpose. Because God wants you to know that he can give you life. Resurrection life. Amen. I do set aside the grace of God for if great righteousness could be gained to the law, we learned that last night, Christ died for nothing. Galatians 2.21 He provides life. For if a law has been given that could import, import sorry, life, then righteousness could would, would have certainly have come by the law. Galatians 3 and 21. So read the scripture for yourself. Romans 6 and 23. Everybody knows that. Everybody. 623. Everybody? If you know it on Facebook, give me a, a thumbs up. <laughs> what do Romans 3, 623 say? For the wages of sin is death. Friend, is not physical death. He's talking about death. He's talking about spiritual death. Amen. Some, some people say, well, the wages of sin is death. When you sin, you're going to die. <laughs> you, you hear them preaching that too. Yes, yes. They think that you're going to die physically. No, that's not what going to kill you, man. Physically, physically, well, some people live for how much years, hundreds of years, and they die, their body get that's it. It's, it's, it's the time came. It's, it all depends on what you put in your body, what you eat, what you put in your mouth. <laughs> how you take care of your body, how you how you check check your health, how, how you check your high bl your blood pressure and stuff like that. Yes, if you didn't take care of it, you're gonna die early. <laughs> I'm telling you that because what I'm 74 yeah 74 and I'm going to live another 40 years more or more yeah <laughs> yeah yes man he give me an extra 10 so thank you thank you I'm thankful for that yeah so the wages of sin is death it was a spiritual death Adam and Eve died in the garden of Eden they died spiritually because Adam lived over 900 years. He didn't die at the same time physically, but he died spiritually. Separation from God at that very moment when he disobeyed God. God told him that. Not that he didn't know. It's the same thing God is telling you this morning, those of you that sit in here and wait, and wherever, you might be driving, you might, whatever you are doing. If you never receive Christ, you're going to, you're going to show you, you're de already dead if you never accept Christ. You're already dead, but you're going to remain in death. But there is, there is a choice you have, you have right now. Adam had a choice to choose life. And what he did, he chose death. <laughs> and because he chose death, you and I were born just like that, dead spiritually. So Jesus Christ came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Amen. God's provision under grace in him 
his resurrected life, you have forgiveness. For he has reached, rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his of the, of the son he loves in whom we have how much what we got in him Colossians 1 13 and 14 in him whom we have redemption yes he redeemed us in Christ no matter we were dead in because of Adam this morning we have we in Christ we have redemption hallelujah Yes, I am, the, but this guy sang that song, I am redeemed, I am redeemed, yes. I think um, Big Daddy Waver, he sang that, I love him when I hear that song. Because I know the same thing, he's talking to me. I am redeemed. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Because of Adam's sin, because of de our deadness, glory to God, we have redemption in Christ. That's the only way you can get it. No other way. No matter all the good stuff that you do, not going to help you, friend. You need to come to Jesus Christ for that redemption. You need to receive Jesus Christ and you will get redemption. You'll get redeemed. <laughs> Colossians, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Um, Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In his in, in him we have redemption through the, his blood the forgiveness of sin in accordance to with his riches of of what you do or no of God's grace amen since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own they did not submit to God's righteousness Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for every one who believes. Romans 10, 3 and 4. Everyone believe, who believes will receive it. Amen. And that is talking to those of you this morning that never received Christ. It's calling on you to receive whosoever come he will know what cast you out God made him who has no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God amen some people beating up on themselves and saying well oh my god they, they, you know oh my god I heard a call the other day this this don't don't even he's he's in the mental home he said, he said that um, one of the program we had, he's in the mental home. And, and he said, I accepted Christ when I was 20 something years. But somehow he never knew his identity. Amen. So he went back. He said, I went back doing all that stuff. <laughs> and beating up on himself. And somehow when, when, when the, 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 the minister was trying to lead him to Christ, he, he said, I'm still proud. I'm proud. <laughs> Friend, pride will keep you away from, from receiving your freedom today. But somehow before the end of the program, he surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was a real blessing to hear someone who was so tough, who was so tight, and still still want, want us to be, want everybody to be in his pity party. That's exactly what it is. He, he, oh man, you don't know, you don't know what... What I'm going through, yeah. No, nobody, everybody's going through something. <laughs> everybody's going through something. We we all go through different things, you know. But the the main thing this morning is having the resurrection life living in us, Christ alive living in us. Knowing that will make a big all the difference. Not that big one, but all the difference. <laughs> Amen. Romans 9, 30 and 33 says. What then shall we say that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith? But Israel, who pursue a, a law of righteousness, has not attained it. Why not? 
because they pursue it not by faith, but as if if it were by works. Yes, there's so many people today just trying to pursue it by by doing good. Amen. But that's not going to get you righteous. They stumble over the stumbling stone. As it is written, see, I lay down, the, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him will never put to shame. That's Romans 9 and 33. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. I am, Paul said, Romans 1 and 16 and 17. Uh, one of my favorite verse. I am not ashamed of the gospel of uh, of the gospel because it is the God is the power of God for every for for salvation for the salvation of everyone who believes. First to the Jews. Yes, yeah, the Jews got the opportunity first. But thank God this morning that any when when we receive Christ, we, there's no Jew not Gentiles today. We just get all worked up and 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 and, and people. You hear a lot of people preaching. Uh, somebody shared the other day and they share this Jewish group and they they they're still back there. They're talking about Jesus, but they're still doing all the ritual stuff. No, when you come to Christ, there's no Jew not Gentiles in the kingdom of God. There's no black and white in the kingdom of God, friend. There's no male or female in the kingdom of God. <laughs> there is no rich or poor <laughs> in the kingdom of God. There is no more educated and less educated in the kingdom of God. We are all one in Christ. Man, do we understand that? The Holy Spirit has to reveal this wonderful truth to us. For the gospel is is a is a is is a righteousness from God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written the righteous or the just shall what yeah. live by faith faith in what faith in what Jesus did not just faith because faith in by my wife is sitting on the chair and knowing that if the check going to hold her up. And that's this type of faith we're talking about. We're talking about faith that in God, faith what Jesus did. He did it, friend. He made it possible for every man, every man to have his life. And well, that's what we're talking about this morning, the resurrected life of Christ living in us. But now a righteousness from God. Yes, it is from God. Apart from the law, has been made made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The prophets and all of them testify of this one that is coming. His name is Jesus. He came. He came to give us life this morning. And he is here to give us life already. The day of Pentecost came. Amen. When, when the Holy Spirit came and he is in the world today, his duty is to convict men of unrighteous of, of of sin and 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 to bring 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 men to Christ that is convicting you right now telling you that you you need Jesus Christ you need his life you need to come to him the righteousness from God is from God true faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe Romans 3:21 22 to all who believe not some people all who believe he gave it's a, it's a, some, some some people preaching and teaching there's only some certain people that we save they call them what them the predestinations yes they do not know the meaning of predestination predestination was because Jew and Gentiles nothing to do with individual for God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him will not perish, will have everlasting life. So then the scripture don't contradict itself. If God say whosoever, that means anyone. <laughs> Amen. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is true, true faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God is by faith. 
Philippians 3 and 9. You must have faith, friend, in what Jesus did. Amen. You must have faith in because you can't see him going to the cross right now. You know, but you have to have faith in, in what is what was said. Amen. When you have faith in what Jesus did, then you will receive him and come and receive life. I did that how many years now? 47 years. 47 years ago. I didn't know what I know today. But I heard the gospel preached. Just just like me preaching right this morning, teaching you this morning. Amen. You, you're here. You're here in the world. You, you probably might not hear everything, but you hear something. That, that, that night when I stood up in the corner of, of St. Jules Street in Grenada, amen, I heard something. Nothing. I didn't hear the whole sermon, you know, but there's something I heard. Amen. And something like the Holy Spirit was revealing to me. This guy was preaching about the, the end time, that the famine and the pestilences that will appear, appear. Amen. And that was 47 years ago. And, 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 and like the Holy Spirit just showed me all the, the plantation that we planted, people planted, people made garden right down in the yard, <laughs> in the yard back home, right in the, right there. So you walk through and in the street and you can see the, the corns and the, and the peas, the, that, that was a crop that at that time you plant. And when you, you must plant that, if you didn't plant, you're not going, you're not going to reap. You know, you're not going to get no crop. So people depend on that their livelihood. And, and like the Holy Spirit brought to me, I never forget, and this was 47 years ago, he still, I still can remember. <laughs> I tell you, I'm 74 years old, but I still can remember what happened 47 years ago. Glory to God. And God was showing me the, all the corns and the, everything was withering because of the dry season. So, the, so it's like he was talking about famine and pestilences, but God showed me that like an evidence. Glory to God. And so God is showing you something this morning as an evidence that 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 he's real and and that night um before he gave he, he, he say come come and receive christ come come up come up with you know, pray for me i i said to to my friend my friend uh, he he's still alive he's i think he's 89 years old now glory to god but i he, he was older man than me and we were standing there and the brother there was somebody else he, he passed away already standing up there and he was have a bottle of white horse anybody know what white horse is <laughs> white horse whiskey <laughs> so that's what we would drink every evening after work after work from the prison i go home before i go home we will meet together in in my little place of tailoring another part-time business. Well, I had a owner of that, that, that place, but I still had a job in the prison, working at the prison. And um, I would go, we would go and sit down and bend our elbow, uh, risk <laughs> drinking every day, every single day. So that night, I, I, that guy who had a bottle of whiskey and showed me, and he was calling me, come, come, come. I said, not tonight, not tonight. Never forget this. 47 years ago, friend, July the 31st, 47 years ago. But I can't re still can't remember. So what I'm pointing this out today, there's something saying this morning right now that, that is talking to you, speaking to you. Not the whole, whole message. Some people think they had to hear the whole sermon and go through it. No, no, one point. There's one point. The Holy Spirit is ministering to you. The Bible says that no man cometh unto the Father except the what? Hallelujah, the Holy Spirit draws you. So allow, but you have to allow him to do that. And that night I allow him to draw me. And, and before that I said, tell the man, let's, let's get accept Christ tonight. But I wanted friends, I wanted company to, to go to, to accept Jesus Christ. And this gentleman told me, and he's still my friend. This man's still my friend. Glory to God, what a father I know he's still lost. Amen, good man, good man, but still lost. Amen. As far as I, I said, come on, let's do accept Christ tonight. See, not tonight, man, not tonight. But then I forget what he said. And I said in my spirit, Lord, show me the way. 
and he did, he did. I felt that lifted out burden. Friends, I was a bad person, I was lost. Some people say, well, they were drug addicts and they this and that and God, God, you hear a lot of testimonies on, on Facebook today about I'm free, I'm free from drugs how many years ago and that, that is good, nothing wrong in that. But you never hear the talking about the test, they never gain a testimony of the saving grace of Christ. Friends, I was I was bad person. I was all in not not that I was in involved in drugs, but alcohol. Yes, I in drink alcohol every day. Amen. So I, I don't know if I was 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 addicted. Amen. But yeah, we we drank every day. He said, so is that not nothing to do with that? Nothing to do with that. All my bad thing that I was doing, I was lost. Bottom line, you are lost. And God wants to give you life. What he wants to give you this morning? His resurrected life. Glory to God. That's what we're talking about. Resurrection life. Who gave, who had, who could offer you? Jesus Christ died at the cross. Forgave you for your sins. Every one of your sins. Your sins was taken away at the cross. And glory to God. But because you never received Christ, you still lost you're still dead you need life this my life he's that's why my wife the holy spirit gave her that two poem this morning to talk about life she didn't know what i was going to talk about she did not know amen so it's all about christ's life friend the the message that's the message the message is not forgiveness glory to god the message is not about forgiveness because every man this morning are forgiven Amen. But every man, if you never receive Christ, you still are forgiven cops. A forgiven lost person. Yes. You need Christ's life. You need his resurrected life in you. Glory to God. And when Christ come, when you understand that, friend, when you receive Christ and you understand that, your life will never be the same. No. No way. I see some threats and some evilness on Facebook. My God, I, I some if I did not have the, the forum to preach on Facebook, I would get off from Facebook. Because it's so it's so corrupt. Amen. You see people wishing because the man, the president of the United States came down with Cora, the infection of vi the virus, they're wishing him dead. You know, you hear what, what, what kind of people do this thing? Wish the, the worst enemies I don't want my watch. I wouldn't wish my. Well, I, I don't have enemies anyway. <laughs> In what well, father I know, some people don't love me, but yeah, I, I won't wish them death. No, I wish them get saved. When Christ come and live in you, when you have the resurrection life in you, you will wish every good thing for the other person, even your enemies. Mm -hmm. That's the word of God, my friend. Yes. So that's what I'm calling men, you and I, everybody this morning. Even those that are born again and don't recognize the life of Christ in them. If you're born again for many, many years, you're probably even a preacher this morning, preaching, but don't recognize his resurrection life in you. The Bible says in, first, in Colossians chapter 1, Paul says, um, the mystery, there was a mystery that was hidden until now. That mystery was not revealed to anyone. Not even the Peter, my friend, my great friend, my great apostle friend, Peter. Peter was a guy, man, I love Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter cannot relate to me. I can relate to Peter, not that he really, I'm, he's gone. But I relate to Peter, man. The, the words, the thing that is come out from Peter was. Peter was a, a cuss word. <laughs> so Peter, not even Peter was revealed, it was not revealed to Peter. It was revealed to Peter the day when Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am in, in, in the gospel? And Peter, and all everybody was saying, Elijah, see, yeah, see, prophets, and everybody was given different version of who do you say that? When Jesus asked the question, you may, remember that was his disciples. They were walking with him. They, they, they. 
One one guy came up with it with it was, was Peter. Peter said, You are the cross, Christ, sorry, the Son of the Living God. What did Jesus tell Peter? Huh? Huh? <laughs> See, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. But my Father in heaven. Amen. Remember? The disciples at the time did not have the Holy Spirit in them. Although they had Jesus, Jesus would not live in them. No, but Jesus was with them. Even, even was it Philip? Philip that down, um, or Tom, or not Thomas, Philip, one of them. Philip. Philip. Amen. That that when Jesus said that we he gotta go and say to the Father, Jesus, Philip, he said, show me, show us the Father, show us the Father, Lord of Jesus. And he said, Philip, man, you've been with me all this while. You, you remember that? Philip was with Jesus, walking with Jesus. They were there preaching and do, seeing all the miracles, seeing what Jesus was doing. But still they did not know who he was and who he is. And Peter, Jesus said to, to Philip, Philip, you've been with me all this while. So long you've been with me. And you're still asking me the question? Me and the Father are one. Eh? Do you hear that, Peter? I'm Philip. Yes, we are one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. St. John Gospel. Amen. He was God in the flesh. He was God walking right there with them, and some of them did not know it. Just the same way right now, there's a lot of people preaching and teaching, they not, don't know that Jesus Christ is God. They're separating him. Amen. Amen. He is God, friends. God came in the flesh. He is, you know why he is God? He, there was no one had a life to give. There was no one had a life. The sacrificial system was not working. The sacrificial system was what? The bulls and goats and 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 the, and, the, and and killing, making sacrifice and offering the sacrifice for sin, but it was an atonement. It was a covering for sin. It took away. I forgive you for your sin for one year. One year. But when you go back and you repeat, you do it again. You well, more than one at that time. You have to wait another year to come back to get another sacrifice. But Jesus Christ came and he did it once and for all. He died once and for all. At the cross, you see, he didn't, he, he didn't have to just cover your sin, which a lot of preachers preaching and teaching that, saying he, he atoned for sin. He took away your sin because he's not going to come back and do it anymore. He did it once and for all. It's a done deal. But now he gave you the option because he took away your sin this morning. He gave you the option to have his resurrected life. And that's the only solution this morning for man's problem. <laughs> that's the only solution for man's problem. It's when you receive and know that you... And, and those of us, many, many years, I received Christ. I had the, the resurrection life in me, but didn't know it. All I knew was religion, because that's why I was struggling to get it, to get to God. Fasting and praying and doing all kind of stuff. Fasting. Did not know that I already have the resurrected life in me. But what the day it came when it was a short to me, like, just like Paul, Paul. And I, I went from there to there. Paul said in Colossians, the mystery had been hidden until now. So it got to be revealed, revealed by the Holy Spirit. And I think I had a scripture for, for that, where God, um, oh, maybe I lost it. It's 1 Corinthians, I think. 1 Corinthians. Mm. Did have it this morning. Write it down. Write it down. First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians two and nine. But it is written, I has not seen, nor ever heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of man, the things which God has prepared for them that loved Him. <clears throat> but um, verse, verse that's um, that's nine. Verse ten. We never read down. Mm -hmm. You see? 
We don't read on. <laughs> it's just like a scripture we, we read that say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, and we stay right there and we say, oh, you got to work it out. <laughs> if you read on that scripture, you see that, but it's God that worketh in you. It's God doing it, not you. Not you working it out. <laughs> you got to read on, friend. That's why Paul, Paul admonishes son, Timothy, to study, to show thyself approved. Take it, we take scripture out of context every time and make a doctrine with it and, and keep people in bondage with it. But, but, but here verse 10 says, But God has revealed them unto us by what? His by His Spirit. So there must be a revelation from God by His Spirit revealing to us the meaning, the meaning of the Scripture. Paul says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed and the key word in that verse of scripture is rightly, 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 rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You could divide the word, but you have to divide it rightly for people to understand who they are in Christ. Yes. Amen. So the spirit has to reveal it. Yes, I got checked right there. <laughs> we have to reveal it. Stop doing it on your own intellect. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you truth. And in order, again, I said it to you many times, in order for us to understand this morning the whole scripture, when you open the Bible, read the scripture, friend in light of the finality of what? The cross. At the cross, everything was final. Amen. Before Jesus gave up his spirit, the Bible says, he said, what? It is finished. It's time for man to stop on doing it themselves. I came. I did it all. I did it for you. All you have to do now is to receive. That's what he's talking about. Faith without faith. It is impossible to please God. Not faith in because I could sit on this chair and the chair could hold me. No, faith in what Jesus did, friend. He took away your sin at the cross. And he gave you the option this morning that you may have raw life, resurrected life, his resurrected life, Christ's life in you, your hope, are your only hope, not just hope, your only hope of glory. Yes, when you understand that, your life will never be the same. You know why I could say that? Because I understood it. My life has never been the same since. This was many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. And I'm still growing. Hey, I'm still growing. Just yesterday, we were reaping some f fruit back there. I, went, I planted uh, some sweet potatoes. Man, and uh, they went down, dug down. That's <laughs> a big, big log. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't take a picture of it. Give my sister in law. <laughs> yes, you. I watered it. I watered it. I watered it. It grew. I took care of the garden. So when I reap, when I went to reap, I got some stuff that I'm still reaping, although the fall is coming down, but I still can reap it. Tomato and stuff like that. Cucumbers. Yes, but I took care of the garden. So that's that's you gotta grow. You gotta grow, friend. You gotta study. Don't just hear what, what Brother Reed is saying to you. Don't be listen to people. Don't listen to man. The Bible says that. The Bible said that. The Bible said that in Corinthians, First Corinthians two and ten. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. John, First John said, "You need no man to, to teach you, 
but the Holy Spirit that live in you will teach you some truth no all truth so when when you end up before you end up preaching and teaching you need to be taught by the Holy Spirit so then you can reveal truth to people that's why he called us that's why so many so many confusion today in the world in America so many confusion we just saw on Facebook the other day with this guy this this great preacher man he has an elegant word big words big words he's talking when he speaks a lot of followers but he, he just came out and and embraced something that called what socialism I mean why are you put preacher coming in and, and saying that you know <laughs> Do he know what socialism is? Socialism will close him down. Don't he know that? <laughs> they would clo that's, the, that's the key. That's the, that's, the, that's the motive. To close you down. Okay, that's one good thing that would happen to, to them, to him. He, he get closed down because he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be talking like that. He, because he don't preach truth. Yes. So you and I that know truth, let us preach truth. Let us first keep on studying. Allowing us to grow. Grow in the knowledge of Him. Do not take scripture out of context. Allow the Spirit of God to teach you. Read on. Read on. When you read the scripture and you don't understand what He said, ask Him. He will teach you. Teach you the meaning of it. He always will. His word is not your word. Not a religious word. It's His word. Jesus' word. Amen. He said, my word is spirit and they are life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, a little comment here from my brother. That's why the scriptures are useful for teaching, rebuking, concerning the training and righteousness so that the man of God can be equipped <laughs> for good work. Yes, <laughs> my brother always keep me together, man. He always say the right thing. <laughs> exactly, he did. exactly. No, he didn't know I was going. To, what I was saying, I'm going to preach and teach and say that. There's a lot of things that I say this morning that I wasn't even thinking about it. The Holy Spirit is the one who wants us to know the take the meaning of the Word of God, helping us to grow. God bless you, friends. Love you all. Love you, love you, love you. Love is. Jesus said, by this all, all men know that ye are my disciples when ye have what? Love one for another. And I love you from the depth of my heart. And the only reason I'm here on Facebook and YouTube and teaching this, this message is because it is imperative that this word go forth. Go forth. Jesus said that the world sin is unbelief in me. The word scripture verse that my wife read, although she didn't read it in the in the modern day Bible, like the King James or anyone. But the, the what what version you read again? Passion. Passion version was explaining it in a little better way. Amen. Yes. That Jesus said the world's sin is unbelief in me. Yes. Amen. The scribes and the Pharisees, they came and they were, Jesus was right there with them. Right there. And Jesus tell them, you search the scripture, for in it you think that you have eternal life. But the same scripture spoke of me. And you reject me. Yes. You hear so many people rejecting Jesus Christ. The same scripture you read in the reading of the Bible. But they're rejecting Jesus Christ. That's the only one that can give us resurrection life. That's the that's the, the solution this morning. That's the solution. Come receive him before it is too late. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Your grace is enough. We thank you for all that we have heard today. We thank you for the one that hearing and receiving. <laughs> Most of all, receive your life. 
this morning because they recognize they are dead, spiritual, dead, spiritually. <coughs> and all they need today is life, your life. Thank you for the one that I've been born again today, right now. I don't know their name, but uh, Lord, you know them. My name and by nature. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Love you. God bless you here, every one of us. <laughs> we praise that name, God name and we thank you, God. Later on this evening we'll be joining with the Davises up in two 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 or two. Concord Pipe. Concord Pipe. <coughs> What's the name of the hotel again, brother? Courtyard Marriott. Courtyard Marriott. Amen. At, okay, thank you. And we will be there 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're in Delaware and you're free and you feel and you just just take a ride up, friend. Every hour, all are welcome. Just put your mask on when you're getting in into the hotel or when you get to the room you're free to not to wear your mask <laughs> that we 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 do social distancing there too we have enough room enough space glory to god so we follow the rules you know but but um we're still not afraid okay we're not doing it because we're afraid mm -hmm. we're doing it because we, who we are we're children of god amen amen okay <laughs> before i close I, I gotta, I gotta make, I gotta comment here again. The one sin held over mankind. Yes, thank you, brother, for reminding me that the one sin that remained over mankind, every man, even though they were forgiven at the cross, the sin was taken away at the cross. That one sin mankind has to correct. It's a correction sin. It's unbelief in Jesus Christ. Except you believe and receive. Because if you believe, you're going to receive. Okay? If I buy you a gift and I give you the gift, unless you receive that gift, the gift still remains mine. It's <laughs> not yours. You must receive. When you receive the gift, it's yours. It's just like Christ. He did it. So all you have to do now is to receive it. The one sin, Jesus said, is unbelief in me yes and that will say come unto me all ye that heavy laden and I will give you rest in Gal in Roman not Roman but last book of the Bible yeah. Revelation said behold I stand at your door and knock if any man open up the door it's like if someone come to our door you know and the door is closed right there the door is closed and if if the door is unlocked but if they, and they didn't have it's unlocked <laughs> we have to open it for him and when we open it he's going to come in exactly so the door your door is locked out and jesus christ is saying open the door and let me in and i'll come in with you and anyone that come unto me i will in no wise cast them out. God bless you. Bye. Good night. Good morning. Sorry. Good day. Good night to some people. Good night to some people, yeah. See? Stand corrupted. God bless you.